the 15th of November. I'm Diego Guerrero. And I'm Tommy Chura Cheryl. And you're watching Set 10 News. To start us off, Jacob has some alternatives to Thanksgiving meals. Hi, welcome to Chef Skeeter's Kitchen. Today we're going to be making a vegetarian alternative to a Thanksgiving turkey. Okay, so the trick to making a vegetarian turkey is to getting the shape down, which is why we'll be using a mold for this recipe. So this is a very simple recipe. This recipe only uses six ingredients. Our one can of golden sweet corn, our one can of peanut butter delight creamy peanut butter, a Reese's peanut butter cup, a whole slice of cheese, a brand new pair of AirPods, and hand sanitizer. Okay, we're gonna put this mold onto the sheet tray, and then we're gonna put, make sure you put the corn and the peanut butter onto the side so it can all coagulate together. Oh God, okay. Okay, we're gonna set our oven to 550, and we're gonna wait for three hours. All right, so now that we've been baking this turkey for about three hours, let's take it out and see how it looks. All right, so we're gonna lift the mold, and see how this turns out. Ugh, yummy. Look at that, so beautiful. Now that's what I call a turkey. Thank you, Jacob, for that delicious recipe. I might just have to try it at home. Also in seasonal news, the Frisco Turkey Trot is November 28th. Amanda has more news on it. Hey Titans, do you want to help raise money for charity by running? Well then come to the North Texas Turkey Trot at Frisco Square on November 28th. The race will start at 8 a.m. with the Miracle Mile. At 8.15, the 5K and 10K will start. At 9.30, the overall award ceremony will start, and at 10.30, the event will end. Packet pickup will be at the Frisco Academy Sports and Outdoors on Saturday, November 23rd from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Tuesday, November 26th from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., or Wednesday, November 27th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Register at NorthTexasTurkeyTrot.com. See you there, Titans! Every day, people serve this country for our well-being. We'd like to thank every veteran for their service. May then explain the meaning of honoring people who served. On Veterans Day, we wave around American flags and have barbecues, but we often don't stop to think for one second about what Veterans Day really is about, the troops. Today, we talk to teachers, parents, and students alike who have served in the armed forces and discuss how it impacts their everyday lives. I joined the military and joined the Marine Corps because I wasn't ready to go to college. I wanted to get out and see the world first. Well, the ups were you know, getting to see the world, getting to see uh, exotic places, going around the world, and making new friends from all over the country, uh, working with those awesome people. So when I uh, got out of the Marine Corps, it's uh, very hard to come back into civilian life. I think the most important lesson I learned was taking each day and appreciating those days, appreciating my time. Yes, uh, my name is Matthew Sears, I'm assistant principal here at Centennial. I was in the United States Navy and I was in for three years. The downs were away from family. I was out, out at sea 12 months at a time. Uh, ups were seeing the world, serve, serve my country. That was the best and most important thing that I learned. Now we understand the true importance of Veterans Day. Titans, please make sure to honor service members in your family, your friends, and your teachers. Titan teachers, parents, and students, thank you for your service. This has been Nathan Evanhart with Sun 10 News. Tornadoes are not a new thing to North Texas. However, we've been having a lot more and a lot more severe tornadoes. Owen has more on how you can help tornado victims. Recently, multiple tornadoes have been ripping through the Dallas area, causing massive damage just less than an hour away. Here's how you can help anyone who's been affected. First and foremost, every dollar counts. Numerous charities have opened donations that will be used to help schools and residents that have been displaced. Students that have had to switch schools due to damage are seeking uniforms and umbrellas, and the Dallas School District is asking for monetary donations or gift cards, which can be mailed to 9400 North Central Expressway, Box 21. I'm Owen Davis with Centen News. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Another way to support people with cancer is No Shave November. It's the month of November, which starts the charity event No Shave November. What do you do for No Shave November? Well, sir, I choose to uh, save that money instead of uh, shaving and putting product in my hair, and I use that money to donate. Uh, no Shave November affects a lot of people in many different ways. Uh, the whole point of it is to bring awareness, it's to create a conversation piece so that uh, if a ladies choose not to shave their legs or men 
choose not to uh, maintain their or groom their beard. Uh, people ask questions, why are you doing it? The whole point of it is, is to bring awareness to all the cancers in the world. Uh, for this year, I actually started today. So today is November 1st, so I started uh, to not shave and trim. As you can see, there's a little bit of growth. I did not shave this morning, but uh, the first time I ever started doing it was about 10 years ago. So I participate because I want to bring awareness to many of the cancers that are in the world. Uh, my grandfather died of brain cancer, and during his treatment, he lost all of his hair, as many cancer patient, patients do. They uh, lose their hair during their treatment, and so the whole point of it is to just grow your hair. And if you are able to grow long locks of hair, you can donate your hair to Locks of Love. It's not too late to start No Shave November. This has been Austin Murphy with Centen News. Thanks, Owen. It's always great to give a helping hand. You might have noticed that over the summer, her school got some renovations. Megana has some more information on her new auditorium. Recently, there's a lot of changes going around Centennial High School, and one of them is the renovation of the old auditorium. After months of waiting, finally, the new auditorium is finished. Two summers ago, we had a building renovation, uh, and for some reason, the district left off our auditorium to get renovated. This past May, uh, we got the word that our auditorium was going to get renovated starting in this past August. So we've got all new speakers hung and it's surround sound. We also have all um, some new lighting. We did remove carpet from the aisles and painted the concrete and we got all new carpet um, throughout the theater and this space. It's not old technically, but yeah, they're always looking at new ways to try to keep it fresh. The new auditorium looks fantastic. I can't wait to see more changes like this in the future. This is Megan Avedala for Centen News. Our Titan Theater is coming out with a new play. Bailey gives us a look into the production of Junie B. Jones. The Titan Theater has been working very hard to put together their fall show, Junie B. Jones. Junie B. Jones is a musical based on the best-selling book, Junie B. Jones by Barbara Park. The actors all have different favorite parts. The favorite part of the show is probably where um, Herb meets Junie for the first time and they become friends. I like the part of the show where we have our big kickball tournament because that's like the only part where everyone's on stage. There's many reasons to come see the show. It's kid friendly, it's super fun, it's really entertaining, and if you read any of the books as a child, it'll kind of be a throwback to when you were little. You can get tickets beforehand. Go on our website to get tickets and VIP seating. Be sure to come see Junie B. Jones tonight at seven, or one of their three shows tomorrow at 10, one, or seven. I'm Bailey Coyle for Centen News. Recently, our sports teams have been doing pretty well. Craig has an e-update. There's a lot to report around this time of the year with volleyball and football seasons coming to a close. Football ended with a disappointing 2-8 record, but that didn't stop Rich Tejada from putting up 844 total yards and 8 touchdowns, and Max Dodson from putting up 121 tackles and 2 sacks as a safety. They win my personal offensive and defensive players of the year. Volleyball traveled to McKinney Boyd High School to take on Lovejoy in the first round of the playoffs. Unfortunately, they fell 0-3 to to close out the season. Golf season is underway, and the first meeting resulted in a win for senior Austin Coyle, and a very special congratulations to senior golfer Lindsey Kim to be selected as NBC Scholar Athlete of the Month. Last Wednesday was National Letter of Intent Day, and senior Zarin Hemsley has committed to Temple University. Samantha Hastings has committed to University of Southern California. Golfers Nathan Weber, who committed to Sam Houston State, and senior Austin Coyle, who committed to Dallas Baptist University. A very special congratulations to them. This has been Centa News on November 15th with Diego Guerrero and Tommy Churichero. See you on the next edition.